I'm James Lott, and I'll be taking you on a tour of the night sky. A long time ago, we were just discovering these awesome things in space. But now we can learn things a lot easier than you could learn back then. But anyway, I'll be taking you on a tour around space. So what do you say? Let's get started. This is Cain's Venetici. And it is made up of two dogs being held by the constellation Boötes. Inside the Cain's Venetici constellation is the Cat's Eye Galaxy. It was discovered by Pierre Machain in 1781 and was published by Charles Messier, his supervisor, in the Messier catalog two days later. It is controversial whether this galaxy contains dark matter or not. It is the brightest galaxy in its group. It is made up of two rings. They are the in and outer ring. The inner ring has an oval distortion which led to the creations of the galaxy's outer ring. The outer ring is a starburst ring which has two times greater star forming activity than the inner ring. This is Lyra the Harp and its music has a good ring to it. Inside of Lyra is the Ring Nebula. The Ring Nebula was found in 1779 by a French astronomer named Antoine Darquier du Pelpois. The nebula is facing Earth so that astronomers can s easily see the ring. The nebula was formed when a shell of ionized gas was released into the space surrounding it. Draco the snake has an eye, but it is not a snake eye. It's a cat's eye. It's the cat's eye nebula. It was discovered in 1786 by William Herschel, making it the first planetary nebula ever discovered. Looking at it suggests that the star ejected its mass in a series of pulses at 1,500 year intervals. This was observed by Hubble. The nebula has been observed in radial and X-ray wavelengths. All hail the Queen Cassiopeia. In this constellation, we will be viewing two nebula. They are the Heart Nebula and the Bubble Nebula. Both of these nebula were discovered by William Herschel. First, we'll go to the most important part of the queen, her heart. The heart nebula is 7,500 light years away from Earth. Within the nebula are few bright stars that are nearly 50 times the mass of our own sun. There are many more dim stars in the nebula, but they are only a fraction of our sun's mass. The brightest part of the heart nebula is actually separately classified as NGC 896. And now the queen's favorite activity, bubbles. This is the bubble nebula as it was captured by Hubble for the telescope's 26th birthday. It is 7,100 light years away from Earth, only a little bit closer than the heart nebula. It is only about one and a half times the distance from our sun to the nearest stellar neighbor, Alpha Centauri. Speaking of the sun, the seething star that forms the bubble nebula is 45 times more massive than our own sun. Another member of the royal family will be our next stop, Cassiopeia's beautiful daughter, Princess Andromeda. The galaxy we'll be visiting with the Andromeda constellation has the same name, the Andromeda Galaxy. Charles Messier cataloged it in 1764 and incorrectly credited Marius as the discoverer despite it being visible to the naked eye. Even though it's visible to the naked eye, it is 2.5 million light years away from Earth. William Herschel noticed a faint reddish hue in the core region of Andromeda. In 1885, a supernova was observed in Andromeda, the first and so far only observed in the galaxy. In 1912, Viesto Slipfer used spectroscopy to measure the radial velocity with respect to our solar system. 
he found that it was the largest velocity yet measured at 300 kilometers per second. It spans approximately 200 light years and it is the largest galaxy in our local group. Speaking of light, there is 1 trillion stars, which is more than twice the Milky Way's 200 to 400 billion stars. Talking about the Milky Way, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are expected to collide in 4.5 billion years and will create a giant elliptical galaxy or disk galaxy. Our next stop will be the first but not the only crab on this tour, and it is inside of a bowl. This is the Tarsus constellation, and we will be viewing the Crab Nebula inside of it. Its current name is due to William Parsons, who observed the nebula in 1840 with a 36-inch telescope and made a drawing that looks sort of like a crab. Unlike the Andromeda Galaxy, it is not visible to the naked eye, but it is visible with binoculars under favorable conditions. It also has a magnitude of 8.4. Even though it is not visible to the naked eye, it is closer than the Andromeda Galaxy, at 6,500 light years away. Speaking of light years, it has a diameter of 11 light years. It expands at a rate of 930 miles per second, or about half the speed of light. In 1054, Chinese astronomers observed a supernova. Then, in 1731, John Bevis observed the nebula formed from the supernova, making the Crab Nebula the first astronomical object to be identified with a supernova explosion. At the center of the nebula is the Crab Pulsar, a neutron star 28 by 30 kilometers across, with a spin rate of 30.2 times per second. Next, we'll go to probably one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky, Orion the Hunter. This next stop is a little crowded. We'll be looking at the Orion Nebula, Dame Ron's Nebula, and the Flame Nebula. All of these nebulas are in the same group. The first of these is the Orion Nebula, and it is visible to the naked eye. However, the first discovery of the nebula was credited to Nicola Claude Fabre du Perez. It contains a very young cluster known as the trapezium. Our next nebula, D. Mayron's Nebula, was named after its discoverer, D. Mayron, who discovered it in 1731. It is a part of the Orion Nebula, separated by a lane of dust. Both of these are about 1,600 light years away. Our final nebula we will be visiting in Orion is the Flame Nebula. It is 1,350 light years away from Earth and is an emission nebula. At the center of the nebula is a cluster of newly forming stars. Canis Major the dog stole Thor's helmet and is running away with it across the night sky. The Thor's Helmet Nebula is 11.96 light years from Earth. It is similar in nature to the Bubble Nebula, and its interaction with a molecular cloud is thought to have given it shape. Just like I'm a twin, the constellation Gemini is also a twin. And in it, we'll be visiting the Eskimo Nebula. It was discovered by William Herschel in 1787 and is about 5,000 light years from Earth. It is surrounded by gas that compose the outer layers of a sun like star. This stop will be the final crab of our tour and also another constellation with an animal inside of it. But this one has a whole hive of bees. It is the beehive cluster. It is 577 light years away, but still visible to the naked eye. In the evening of every year between February to May, 
at 1.5 degrees, the cluster can easily be seen through binoculars. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this show and learned a lot.